name is Outsider2522 and welcome to another Eidolon video. Now today I've got a video that was requested by a viewer of mine and what they were asking if I could cover what they classify as mid-game content. The part they were looking at is when you first enter World 5 and you see the altar. How does Divinity work and what's the strategy that you should probably take to make this skill as seamless as possible? Let's talk about it. Before I say too much, this really really worked on the last video. Please join the Discord in the link below. Uh, we're looking to build a community. I got quite a good quite a good number of people joined last time, so hopefully this video can do just as well and we can make that server grow. Um, obviously, in terms of there, I did have people asking about whether I could help with their account. You know, in there, feel free to drop things like your um, idle on efficiency so then I can actually go through it and I can give you feedback specific to your account where I would look to aim next, that sort of thing. Also, remember to like, share and subscribe. It really helps the channel to grow. Okay, so the first thing to know about Divinity is there is an altar. It's to the left of the hole of like the wormhole as you get into World 5 and you sit on it to start it. Okay, on the altar there are different styles. To begin with you will only have Kinesis and what styles do is they increase your Divinity Rate which is a currency used by upgrades and they increase your Divinity XP. They do different things, alright? So you first entered World 5 and you're just coming from World 4. Now, in World 4 you will have had a lot of your tunes sat in the lab, alright? Lab bonuses are very, very powerful. Now. There are kind of two ways to handle the beginning of World 5, and it depends upon how active you are. So, if you are less active, then I recommend leaving the people in the lab who are in the lab, and everyone else sitting them on the Divinity Altar. The reason is you want to get some Divinity levels to unlock different styles. If you um, are active, and you can log in just before, you, just before your daily reset, then I recommend putting everyone on your altar just for daily reset, putting them back in the lab. All right, you'll still get your no bubble left behind, which is the main thing you're going to need at the moment. All right, because I recommend focusing on Divinity as soon as you enter World 5. Okay, so with the styles, what you're going to do is you're going to go Kinesis. Once you reach level 5 in Divinity, you're going to swap to Chakra. You're going to ignore the level 10. The reason is it gives more Divinity points than XP. We only care about XP at the moment because we want to reach a certain level. Once you reach level 15, you're going to get one Divinity XP for all characters per hour. Now, one XP is less than two XP, which you get Chakra. However, with Mantra, it stacks. All right. So if you can pull all 10 tunes onto here, you're going to be getting 10 XP an hour instead of um, 10 XP per tune, which means you'll get 100 XP per hour. Sorry instead of 10 tunes at 2 XP, which is only 20 XP. So you're going to get five times as much XP by putting everyone on this. It's really, really important. And you're going to leave them on Mantra. Okay? It's the best XP per hour for the moment. All right? When you get to level 25, which unlocks Vitalik, you're going to ignore this. Now, this gives seven XP per tune per hour. Okay? If you're only using partial tunes, this might be a good idea. However you're going to miss out on levelling the characters who are in your lab. So I still would recommend staying with Mantra if you can. And what this is going to do is if you were to put all 10 on it, because you're getting 7 XP, you're going to get 70 XP. It's still lower than that 100 XP if you were to put all 10 tunes on Mantra. So Mantra is your real MVP when it comes to levelling up. The next one which you're going to get is Divinity Level 40. You're going to unlock Tranqui. Okay, now Tranqui is, a, is the game changer. Once you unlock Tranqui you can bring everyone out of Divinity, okay? They will passively gain free Divinity XP as a base even when they're not meditating, which means you'll constantly be gaining Divinity levels. This is your goal early on in Divinity, okay? You want to be reaching level 40 as quickly as possible. So, as I say, you really want to race towards Mantra. So you're going to do Kinesis, Chakra, Mantra. You're going to stay on Mantra until you unlock Tranqui with everyone. Once Tranqui's unlocked with everyone, you can then go and do whatever you want in World 5, all right, now, that's kind of the route that I take and the route that I would advise taking. Um, the reason is because then you'll start getting passive buffs from Divinity without really having to worry about it, which is just great. One less system to care about. Now, you may also want Divinity points because the God bonuses are actually very, very strong. Now, at this point, you're likely going to have at least one, um, they're called Elementalist, which is on the Mage School. They might even ev ev be looking to evolve into an Elemental Sorcerer. You might have done that in World 4. If you've done that, great. 
the Elemental Sorcerer um, will be fantastic. And what I looked to do was actually keep the Elemental Sorcerer on here to gain the Divinity Points that let me unlock all the gods. The reason is they get buffs from it. All right, it's their class speciality, so I highly recommend it. So, um, so when, if you're if you're on an Elemental Sorcerer and you are trying to push for Divinity for the actual gods and unlocking them. As soon as you unlock Zen at level 60, you're going to swap to that because it's going to give you 8 Divinity XP. And as soon as you unlock Mindful, you're going to swap to that because it's giving you 15 Divinity Points, 10 of Divinity XP. All right. It's the best in slot if you're meditating. As soon as you bring your Elemental Sorcerer off of the altar, though, remember to switch it to Tranky to get that passive XP. All right. I'll explain why in a minute. Okay, so gods, how are they set up? There are, I think there's 10. Is there 10 at the moment? Uh, two, four, four, six, eight, ten. Yeah, ten. Okay, all of them have a major bonus, and what the major bonus is going to do is if you're linked to that god, so every class can link to one god, elemental sorcerers can link to two. If you're linked to that class, you're going to get the major bonus, and the major bonus is static. It stays as it is. So, for example, the snake, Snehebatu, is going to give you 30% AFK gains for all activities on that character. All right, uh, no, is it on that character or is it on all characters? I mean, it's on all characters. Uh, no, on that character. Okay, so if you're linked, you're going to get an automatic 30% AFK gain. What you'll also get is a minor god, minor linked bonus. Now, the minor linked bonus will give you a percentage of the maximum. So, for example, with the snake, he's got 70% accuracy and 70% defense. However, you will get less of that based around your divinity level, which is why increasing your divinity level passively by using Tranky is so important. Even if you're not actively leveling this skill, you still want to be getting better minor, minor god bonuses. So that's going to really help. The third bonus that gods have is a blessing bonus. Now, these are passive skills that carry over onto all characters forever. You have to buy them with various currencies. So things like bits you'll get from uh, gaming, um, cash, atoms, which you'll get from the Atom Collider, all these sort of things, they get quite expensive towards the end, but to begin with, they're not too bad. So these bonuses as blessings are going to be passive for all characters. So do not sleep on these and upgrade them when possible. But remember, these are currencies that are in high demand because they upgrade other things in the game. Let's talk about offerings and some of the ways you might use to unlock new gods. So in offerings, there's low categories and there's high categories. The low categories are 1%, 5% and 10%. This is the chance to unlock a god by paying this offering. The high category is 25%, 50%, and 100% chance. Now, like all things in Eidolong, you're actually better running the 1%, okay, more often. It will have the highest chance of actually completing it. However, there is a chance that you might overrun on it. So the tactic which I and a lot of people tended to do was you run the 1%, up until the point either 50% or 100% becomes available. You then save up and you buy the more expensive version. At 50% and 100% you have a very high chance of unlocking the god without all of the drama. So if you don't want to go through that RNG process of playing 1% and hoping you get lucky, um, that's the route I would go down. So, you know, 1% paying it off just to try and rerun and re-spin re basically your chances until you get the high offerings at 50 or 100% and then save for those. So we've looked at the different styles and we've looked at what the gods actually give you. But now I'm kind of going to give you an idea of how I would go about unlocking gods because there is a sort of method to the madness. Now, remember at the beginning of the game, I said, if you can afford to bring everyone out of the lab, the reason for that is, is because you're going to start with the snake god. All right, you can kind of ignore him for now. You might use him for sampling later, but to begin with, he's not super important. The god you're going to push for is Arctis, the bear god. And the reason is, is that if you're can if you're attached to that god, you're you're constantly in the lab mainframe. Now, what this does is it gives you a lot of flexibility. Instead of having all characters in the lab, which you may want to do later for sampling and stuff, actually now you can put all characters in the lab without having them actively in the lab which means they can go and do other jobs while still getting all your lab bonuses. This is a huge step forward. I really, really recommend rushing to Arctis if you can. And the reason is because it just gives you that freedom and flexibility to actually go and play the game rather than losing 90% of your characters to the lab. You can still leave them in the lab if you want to, but it's not how I would play. 
Okay, mainly because I feel like the lab kind of killed off a lot of content. But again, if you're happier only managing a few tunes and don't want to micromanage, this might not be the one for you. The next god you're going to unlock is Nobisek, to the insect. All right, he's going to increase portal kill. So if you do have anyone who's out actively, say for example, you only need seven people in the lab, you might have three people out who can do other things as well. This is going to increase your kill count. So this is really, really good on things like siege breakers that are pushing uh, green mushroom kills or trying to get um trying to push forward maps and things like that also really really good when you're trying to push maps of all characters so if you are trying to push maps of all characters you might want to cycle this in and out it's a very good god the next god you're going to unlock is harriet the bunny this one lets you produce three times more resources at the 3d printer this is when arctis might not be as exciting of a god because you might want to triple your samples to do this, you might have to put people back in the lab, but it's a very, very good god to equip yourself with. Okay, mainly because later on in the game, again, I've said it in many, many videos, you're going to need atoms. You, you 3D print those, basically. Three times resources means three times more atoms. It sells itself. After that, you're going to get Gohara, the goat. Now, this one's a bit case dependent so say for example if you wanted to increase your lab level because you need to um, get better mass skill mastery on it you might want to run this and what this is going to do is if you're on the divinity auto you'll also get lab xp at the same time so you're going to level up two skills quicker um yeah it just depends on what you're trying to do it comes down to personal preference it's a very niche kind of um god but it is useful if you want to use it here comes, in my opinion, opinion the, the MVP of the game, Omnifowl, the elephant. What he's going to do is when you claim AFK time, doesn't count for candy, there's a chance that you will get the same amount of time for refinery, 3D printer, cooking, pet breeding, sailing, or gaming. Now, the ones you're going to look out for here are the 3D printer. That can be huge. Cooking can be huge early game. Uh, sailing can be very, very helpful, especially um, gaming can be very, very helpful because you're going to want to get those World 5 skills up quickly. They have some very good bonuses in them, so leveling them up is very, very helpful. Omnifowl is very, very difficult to utilise, though, and the reason is because you have to give up something else in return, such as the bunny or the lab. Okay, Omnifowl is something which I think is more useful for your elemental sorcerers where you can equip two gods. So then you might want to look to, um, you know, run the bunny and the elephant at the same time. Get yourself three times resources, three times printers, and the chance to get extra AFK gains. Next is Permep the Tiger. Okay, this is going to give you two times more Definity XP and two times more Definity. This works on all characters okay you only need to attach this to one person and all characters get the bonus from this it's another great choice for an elemental sorcerer so my preferred one before i had to do it was to run two elemental sorcerers one of them was always attached to permap and um harrier p the other one was attached to omnifowl and harrier p okay just to get those extra bonuses where possible but again there are different ways to run this depending on what you're trying to do. And if you're sampling, you're going to do a totally different setup. Um, next, you've got Flutter Abyss. This is a... I don't think you're ever going to use this realistically. Um, you can equip it. It's going to help for, low, for skills like cooking. Um, so what happens is if you level up a skill that's over level 50, you get a Divinity Bell, Pearl. Divinity Bells give 40% XP for any skill below level 50. So they cap at level 50. Cooking is very slow, so getting 40% XP to rank now to level 50 is good. It's very niche. Most skills you're going to have above level 50 by the time you reach this point. So your mining, your wood chopping, things like that are going to be above level 50 anyway because they level up quite quickly. However, there is a case for, for skills that you want to do. it Again, if you're doing those skill masteries, this might be useful. Uh, Cattle, Crook and Badger. So the Skull and the Badger. They don't have any bonuses attached to them yet, so do not connect to these. Now, I did mention earlier, there is a cheat code for this. If you are fortunate enough to get loot or your pockets are deep enough, you can ignore this because you're connected to everything all at once. That's why do so broken. 
because he gives you access to absolutely every one of these bonuses. Every character will get 30% extra AFK gain. They will be constantly connected to every lab node. Basically, you'll get two times kills. You will get print three times resources. Uh, plus, being connected to the lab means you're going to print two times there, so you're going to get six times more resources. You're, if you connect to the auto, you're going to get lab XP. You're going to get AFK gains from Omnifowl in all of those massive skills. You're going to produce two times divinity, two times XP. Um, you're going to get so many divinity pearls. It's unreal. And that's just on the major bonuses, the minor bonuses. You're going to get accuracy, talent points, damage, coins, AFK gains, class XP, speed, sailing speed, skill XP. It's a lot. It's a hell of a lot. Um, I will link to the wiki below so you can read up more on each individual skill and find out exactly how it works if you want to because I really wanted to just give you an idea of how to run this skill rather than an in-depth of what everything is because you can read up on that. If you found this video useful in any way, shape or form, please feel free to like, share and subscribe. It really helps the channel to grow. Until next time, you've been amazing. Take care.